Blender 2.82 Alpha just got UDIM texture support, and that's a pretty big deal. If you look up the term on Google though, you might be wondering what the United Dairy Industry of Michigan has to do with computer graphics, so just check out this video instead. I'm Jonathan Lampo with cgcookie.com, and today I'll walk you through what UDIMs are, how they work, and how to use them in Blender. When you unwrap your objects for texturing, you do it in UV space, this alternate dimension where textures live. Textures are usually square, with dimensions that are typically a power of 2 because it's easier for a graphics card to calculate. So you've got to lay out your unwrapped mesh in this square texture space. To get more resolution in one area of your mesh, you need to scale up its corresponding UV islands to take up more of the space than the areas that need less resolution. And this works great. Sometimes though, you need really, really high resolution details in one area, but don't need them in another area. Rather than deal with massive image files with wildly different UV island scales, the fine folks at Weta Digital back in 2002 decided to place multiple UV tiles next to each other and assign them different images that can have different dimensions, but still act as one texture in a shader. UDIM is short for U-Dimension because it adds another dimension to your UVs, and W is already taken by quaternion rotations and a render engine variable. It's technically more efficient to render out one large image than many small images, but when you get to really, really big sizes, it just starts to become less practical. UDIMs are useful for objects that need very high resolution textures and it's standard to see them in VFX and animation productions, but unusual to see them in a game pipeline, but it still happens. UDIM support in Blender means that it will better work alongside other VFX software like Mari, Substance, and Maya, and that's good for everybody. In Blender 2.82 Alpha and onward, you can now add UDIM tiles in the UV editor. Just head to your sidebar by clicking this little arrow here or by hitting N on the keyboard. And under the View tab, go to UDIM Grid and increase the grid shape either horizontally or vertically. At the moment, the max is 100 tiles, 10 by 10, which is quite a lot. Now, technically, according to UDIM standards, there should be no vertical limit, but 100 tiles is already quite a few. Now, if you look at an image that you've already created, you won't be able to see this option. If I just look at this brush texture here, you can see that my UDIM tile options have disappeared. To actually use UDIMs, we have to create a new image that is specifically telling Blender to use that feature set. So I'm going to clear this image out and create a new texture. I'll have this one be 1K and I'll call it robot underscore UDIMs. I'll set the generated type to color grid so that we can see the resolution very clearly. And most importantly, we need to check tiled. The name of this is a little bit odd because tiled usually means repeating. And in this case, we don't want the main image to repeat, but whatever, that's what it's called. Click OK. And then we actually need to go over to the image tab in the sidebar here. And now we have our UDIM tiles list. The first tile is called 1001, and if we add another one, it'll be called 1002, add another one, 1003, etc. Let's go ahead and add a new one here. And this one we can give a label to make it a little bit easier to tell what should be inside of it. So I'll call this one face, because it'll have his face plate. And I want the resolution to be fairly low, so I'll just give it 128 by 128. And I'll set the generated type to color grid and click OK. And there we go, you can see we have a very low resolution image right next to our 1K image. Let's make one more. I'll click plus, and this one I'll call arms. Because this is a first person character, I'd like the hands and arms to be a lot more high resolution than the rest of his body. So I'll give the resolution a total of 2K. I'll make this a color grid as well, and click OK. So now we have these three tiles right next to each other. And I'll just double click on this first one here and call it body just to rename that and keep it standardized. And you can see the name down here at the bottom left of each of the tiles. I already have an unwrap prepared here that works with the UDIM tiles. And you can see that my UVs are spread over all of them. If you need to move something from one to the other, it's very easy just by using the hold number one. So if I want to, for example, take his legs here and move that over to the next tile, I can just hit G, X, and one and move it exactly one tile over. So that makes it really easy to work with. Now, if we were to save this image out, it'll actually save it as multiple images. So let's go to image and save as. I'll set it in my textures folder and I'll replace the image that I already made as a test here, save as image. And if we open up that folder, then you'll see those images right over here as a set of three. They're called the name of the image dot 1001, 1002, and 1003. 
and we can bring this into any program that supports UDIMS. So for example, Substance Painter. If we try to load this up into Substance Painter, all we need to make sure is that we create a texture set per UDIM tile here when we create a new project. Then just click OK, and that'll load that right up. You can see here in the texture set list that instead of creating a texture set per material, it's created it per UDIM tile. And we can hide these independently. Now at the moment, Substance Painter can't paint across UDIM tiles, but that's a feature that's coming very soon to new versions of Substance Painter, probably later in 2020. But for now, we need to add our materials and stuff to each of these UDIM tiles individually. Other texture painting programs like Mari already support UDIMs way better and can already paint across them and use one material across all of them and things like that. So if you're really heavy into UDIMs, I would suggest using that for now. But what's cool about Blender's implementation is that it can in fact paint across the UDIMs already. So if that's something that you need to do, it's a little bit buggy and I'm not going to show it here because the couple times I did it, it did crash. But that's because this is just the first implementation of it and the official version will support painting across these tiles. Now to actually use this inside of Cycles or Eevee, both render engines support it, you just need to add it as an image texture to the shader. So here let's look at our preview here in Eevee. And let's add a UDIM texture. To do that, you just hit Shift A, Texture, and Image Texture. Now let's use that robot UDIMs that we created before and plug that right into the base color. And right away, that works. You can also load sets of images here as well. So if you click the little file folder and let's pick uh, the ridiculous wood texture that I created, you can see it's 1001. It'll pick all of the images that have that 1001 and load them in as well. So just click open image and set this to tiled and it'll be good to go. Blender will know to grab those extra images and plug them in here too. So that's a first look at UDIMs in Blender. I hope this is as exciting to you as it is for me. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.